made a huge difference in my life. And his, in his document, <laughs> says that women call That's the, the coolest thing ever. Time. After our last video on the hot dog radio, you had a lot of questions. What if you touch a pickle to the tower? Will it glow green? And what about bratwurst? Will it translate the signal into German? And what about the transmitter? It can't be happy shorting the signal straight to ground, right? Should my dad pick the day we do this so he's not hot? <laughs> that would be another one. Well, in this video, we're going to answer all those questions. And Jay from the Plasma channel also came to join us. He'll be posting another video talking about RF, plasma, and how the hot dog turned into a speaker. Link in the description. Now, don't try any of what you're about to see. This video is for education only, and all the tests you see were conducted with a number of safety protocols. We also consulted with multiple antenna engineers to make calculations for safe distances for this tower. But every tower is different, and one wrong step, and you could get severe RF burns. Now, for the first experiment, we wanted to replicate the hot dog test we did before. That time, we didn't know what to expect, but the result blew us away, and that's what led to this video. This time, Okay. I'm super safe now because I have gloves. Yeah. Made a huge difference in my life. And his, in his document, uh, oh. says that women call That's the, the coolest thing ever. Time, right, Genesis chapter 127. Look, what kind? Just, just hear her and then just audio call. How does there's your barbecue a... smell? Okay. <laughs> Come over here. Bring that in front of the camera. So there's the hot dog, 80, 83 degrees. So the whole thing is pretty hot. I'd say it's. Oh, is it? That yeah, one did, we did a long Oh, I smell it. Oh, that's no, disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty bad. I'm not eating it. <laughs> we wanted to do a little science this time. We wanted to see how things like hot dogs and pickles affected the radio signal. So I set up some cameras. There's one on the transmitter control panel, another on the ammeter measuring the RF power on the feed line, and then I had an RTL SDR with a loop antenna on the site receiving the signal, and set up this field intensity meter 16 miles away in my basement. So people are asking if a pickle turns the arc green. So we're going to try to figure that out. What we can't do is have the ground hit it. You ready? Whoa! In the temple. You ready? Whoa! In the temple. Mary says, uh, uh, son, what, what, why have you done this to us? You're fine. With great anxiety. Ooh, it's, huh. it got wimpy here. Huh? The pickle is not nearly as good as the hot dog. It's not. It, it's 70. It's still hot. So it was heating up for sure, but it just wasn't, it wasn't making sound. I wonder Interesting. I is so much better. Okay, let's see the end of it. If you wonder like carterization or something, the surface changed because yeah, of the hold temperature? On. Hold it still. Here's the end of it. Before we get to why the pickle went quiet, I'll give a quick overview of how this AM transmitting station works. The signal comes in from the studio through the internet. This AM processor prepares the raw audio for the transmitter. The transmitter creates the AM waveform, amplifies it to 12 kilowatts using these power amplifiers, and they take a lot of power. Like this whole transmitter takes 21.4 kilowatts at 100% modulation. Then a giant coax cable takes the signal into this huge box called the phaser. The phaser splits the RF into the three towers on the site. Actually, there are two phasers, one for day and one for night. These things are a little complicated, so if you want to learn more about them, I linked to a video where we talked about a phaser for an eight tower AM station earlier this year. Finally, the phaser's output heads out to the three towers where the RF is tuned for each antenna inside these little dog houses or antenna tuning units at the base of each tower. Then these towers that are a quarter of the wavelength of the 1460 kilohertz signal radiate that RF over the entire St. Louis metro area. And if it's any indication of the power going through all this equipment, here's a thermal image of the main RF feed line. And here's the inside of the phaser. All this equipment is handling thousands of watts of RF and tuning it to get the best AM signal. Now, why did that pickle get so quiet? So, what, what, why have you done this to us? You're fucking high. We're looking for you with great anxiety. Now, I'm going to pause for a second here because we're doing science. What do you think just happened with the pickle? That might be weird to ask in most contexts, but this was the point where we started to see something interesting. My dad thought maybe the pickle cauterized itself, like it created an extra barrier of burnt skin between the watery inside and the tower. But looking up close, that's not what happened. That kind of happened later, we'll get to that, but not with the pickle. There's the pickle. Yeah, there's the pickle now, look at that. See, look at that, how ready, almost immediately the power went way down. So, and then, then within off. a few seconds, it, yeah, it jumps completely off. Yeah, I'm sitting there trying to get more energy <laughs> transferred, and I was successful, obviously, with the uh, placement, and it went way down. Yeah, that's a, that's a big foldback going on there. 
there's there's a certain amount of power at which the the plasma can make a good speaker. Seven kilowatts, excellent speaker. Mm-hmm. Four and less, not yeah. quite as good. Yes. So find yourself a good tower. No, don't do this. <laughs> Jay from the Plasma channel came to take a closer look at the plasma, but he also offered to be the honorary taste tester. I don't know if this is a good idea. You know, I don't know if a fried pickle's good in the first place, but... <laughs> Actually, there's something wrong with that pickle. <laughs> That's why it didn't burn. It we should have known. It tasted like metal. It tasted like copper. Oh, uh, gosh. Electrolysis <laughs> tasted just like copper. Now, a okay. lot of people were wondering if you put a bratwurst on would it translate the signal into German so we definitely need to test that out if you hear the German this morning it's just part of the joy of the right household on these days that I burst into our girls room and I just guten morgen meine kinder guten morgen meine damen und herren you know and it, say that good morning ladies and gentlemen good morning my children so this is the vegan hot dog and uh, we're gonna see if if you take the meat away if it still cries out in pain That's not she does that because she knows it can take the big decision that I make. All right, a little thermal check. Yep. 75. It's it's colder than the uh, gherkin. Although I see white things coming out of the butt. That's kind of disgusting. Whatever the vegan hot dog is made of started oozing out the bottom. <laughs> uh, that's what I call roast. <laughs> Actually, the center is pretty good. I don't dare touch. Yeah, we don't, it all came up. There's probably lead paint in there. There's like four other things we burned on there. Ruin it, Jeff. We have a lot of corny jokes. So we're going to see if the corn dog also works. Will this insulating layer of corn protect the hot dog? This is the uh, cooking them up for the grandkids here, Jeff. Work at this time and always listen to your broadcast. I'm wow. The show is beautiful. Thank you so much, John. Appreciate you, man. Work at this time and always listen to your broadcast. I wow. love it. The show is beautiful. Thank you so much, John. Appreciate you, man. And then Anthony, also on YouTube, coming. Whoa, that didn't smell. That, that smell wasn't too bad, actually. Yeah. But I like the smoke. Here, it's like get, Fourth get of the July thermal. trick. 110. That was the hottest so far. Okay. It's coming down. I don't think you want to touch that. Joe, you got that one, right? You're hungry? Yeah. <laughs> that thing smoked and smoked and flames shot out. And I thought, oh, that'll be interesting to see what that did to the SWR and things. And it barely made yeah. a difference. It was the one thing that had almost no effect. It makes me wonder because the corn dog has the corn coating. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing that's what was turning smoke. into smoke. <laughs> now I'm wondering, like, my skin, you have a skin layer and then the inside. Yeah. And that makes you feel, like, a lot worse about RF yeah. burns. Like, maybe it will just... Your skin will come off and then it will start really burning you. Yeah. Anyone, anyone who's had an RF burn, and I'm sure a lot of these, uh, the guys out there have their little, maybe it's a little tick on the finger or whatever, but they're different and you don't want to experience a deep one, that's for sure. So the other question is, will an AM sausage, this is a breakfast sausage, work any better? Because this is, after all, AM radio. Yeah, exactly. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbearing. <laughs> well, it's on fire. <laughs> oh gosh. That 60, was smooth. 65. Like, that one, literally, I think I could have. 65. I think this one let more current go through it and not into it. We were basically turning meat into plasma speakers. But what if we hold a hot dog right up to the tower, but we don't touch it? Is that enough to cook it? Okay, so this is the hot dog. Right now it's 20, about 20 degrees Celsius, a little over that. So bring it up closer to the tower. Okay, I want to see if it heats up. I'm going to bring just parallel, right? It's like parallel. Yep. So just hold it there. Okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Whoa. There, just to prove it was hot. <laughs> that spot will be okay. hot. So it's 23, it warmed up three degrees Celsius. Yeah, that might have been the spark. Tiny bit that spark, but just, just hit it really quick on the spark and see if it gets any hotter than that. Okay. Yeah, now it's 26. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't so, think it heats up. Yeah, it doesn't I don't think it heat heats up, up at all, holding it a quarter inch away. It looks like the 1460 kilohertz signal isn't quite microwave strength, which is probably a good thing, since if the RF was that strong, we'd all be cooked too. I wanted to ask my dad about how our tests might have affected the transmitter. So one thing that I thought was interesting was right when you touched something to it, it looked like the ammeter and the transmitter output power went up. 
from like 12 to 14 kilowatts. Yeah, almost Very like, briefly. Yeah. But I noticed that the FIM at home, the little intensity meter, didn't go up. So I'm wondering, like, is that, did it pull more power through the transmitter? Uh, I, I, I would say that would be probably a monitoring issue with the transmitter design, but... Uh, you mean they don't sit there and design them for hot dogs? It's, uh, yeah, they don't design them to have to put hot dogs on them. Uh, and it could be something where it did push a little a little quick hit, and you're just not going to see that in the meter at the, at the far away place. Uh, because it's also as it's tuning in, you know, it's it's move. It has a pre-programmed weight of the meter and things that mm -hmm. cause it takes energy to move it much. Whereas the the other items we were looking at are much quicker designed to be seen. Did we damage the transmitter? Because it doesn't seem like it would be designed to I, I, do what it did. I think that uh, there, there's a couple of big ma transmitter manufacturers, and Nautel is one. And I do not think that damage the transmitter in any way. It's a kind of an awesome display in the technologies that's been developed over the years and how quick a transmitter can respond to any unusual conditions and not destroy itself. So, And how old is that transmitter? Well, that transmitter is about 10 years old. So it's, it's a young one for that design. Uh, they have a replacement uh, model out there now that's, uh, you can get a 50 kilowatt version that's like a refrigerator size. So that's and I noticed that as they get newer, they get color screens. That's the first thing. And then they also keep getting more and more compact. Yeah, they do. A lot of those circuits people design, that, that RF design world has gotten very efficient and space-wise. Uh, and, and, uh, but in the AM, so you, the AM, remember, you, you have the transmitting part, the RF part, but you have to tune the output of the transmitter. It has to have some components on it for that frequency to optimize everything. And so that makes them bigger than anything, than, than it would need to be if you could figure out how not to have the mm -hmm. particular tuning. Another question I have, looking at all this and thinking about what we were doing, we were shorting the tower to ground through a resistor, uh, mm -hmm. a variable exactly. resistor. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. the world's worst variable resistor, but it was one yeah. uh, with the different meats. Mm -hmm. w like, where does the energy go into the ground? Does it just go into the core of the earth, or what happens there? I would guess it goes down into the dirt, earth, uh, ground world that we have, and because uh, uh, that hot dog can't radiate the energy. If that hot dog was a tuned length hot dog, it would radiate some energy, probably. We also had an RTL SDR plugged into my laptop. I wanted to have like a little pie set up, but I didn't have that in time. Mm -hmm. So I was just running on my laptop, and I noticed, you know, this is AM, so I, I thought with AM it was just one like 1460 and that's it. But it looks like there is actually a little spread. Mm -hmm. It's not much, but there's a little spread. Um, but it didn't seem like there was much of an effect. Are, by doing this, did we go outside the legal limits of yeah. your broadcast? No, I, th or? I think that it showed pretty clearly that the, the arcs and sparks coming off of there were still contained in our frequency band, at least what was transmitted because we were picking up off an antenna separated from the transmitter and never saw any energy popping up outside of that. Like with FM, I know it's spread out a little further, but with AM, you have part of the band there. Yeah, uh, how to explain that? Hmm, maybe something to explore in a future video. We started out today trying to see what meets would be the best at converting AM radio into sound. But what we actually ended up doing was testing the transmitter's foldback protection. And hey, if any Nautel engineers who designed the XR12 are watching, give yourself a pat on the back. This decade-old transmitter passed without a scratch. The vegan hot dog and the breakfast sausage? Not so much. But the most important thing, don't try this at home. Yeah, don't try this at home. And don't, uh, yeah, the whole, don't even mess with AM towers at all. Don't even mess with towers.